Usually you find here the great piece that's going to stand out like a piece of jewelry in a room. It's, 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 it's rock and roll, it's glamour, it's, you, can't, you might not be able to have an entire house that's filled with the kind of things that we have here, but we always have the star piece. You're always going to find the chandelier that's going to be the centerpiece for your room. You're going to find the sofa that's unique and different from any of your neighbor's sofas or anyone else around. It, you're going to find the piece that's different here. Well, the building was designed by Louis Sullivan, and it's Louis Sullivan's only building in New York City. It's a magical, beautiful building. The space itself is light-filled. It's got um, Louis Sullivan's original three-foot-wide columns running throughout. Um, the ceilings are 16 feet high. And it really gives the scale for the oversized Italian lighting that we sell and the sort of larger-than-life furniture that we sell. We look at furniture as art, and we look at each piece in terms of, like you look at a painting or a piece of sculpture. You know, does it merit, is it, is it a little more than just a piece of furniture? Uh, my grandparents started an antique business in 1939 um, in Burlington, Vermont, specializing in American folk art and Americana. My dad uh, runs an auction business currently in uh, Williston, Vermont, called Maryland Company Auctions. What we do here is we're pioneering the next great 50 years of Americana in the 20th century, which is the post-war period, um, and all of the designers and artisans and studio craftspeople that made furniture um, that hasn't yet been recognized as Americana, but certainly is. Sort of we use our eye here to pick the things that are the best and the most beautiful, and there are certain designers that have come to the forefront, like Carl Springer, James Montz, Paul Evans, who designed incredible quality, incredibly beautiful, and completely unique furniture that nothing like it has really been designed elsewhere in the world before. I think that beauty for me comes from seeing the vision that the designer had and, and like understanding their vision. Each, each designer operated within a, a, a world that they created. And when you look at the world of, say, James Mont, it's a chinoiserie fantasy. And you, what's beautiful is sort of understanding where he came from and how that translates into, uh, translate into the objects that he created. The, most of the designers that we deal in are not documented. So we're documenting along the way as we buy things, as we find them and discover them. I consider these pieces to be so cutting edge when they were made that they're still cutting edge right now. And that they still have the ability to shock and to really draw attention in a way that a lot of other furniture doesn't. Um, these pieces draw attention the way a piece of art or sculpture draws attention, which is what the maker intended. They were expressing something beyond furniture making. This is, nothing, nothing that's in this piece was necessary. It's all art.